everyone, my name is Erica from Beach Babe Soapery and today we're going to make frosted pine cone soap. This is going to be a taller soap because we're going to be adding soap frosting to the top. I can't wait. I haven't soap frosted in, in a long time. So yeah, let me show you what we're going to use today. As for the colors, we are going to use the fragrance oil that we're going to use today is from Nature's Garden. and this is a really good one. I've had this one for a while and I was just sitting on my shelf and I'm like, you know what? Darn it. I'm going to use that one today. The notes on the fragrance all is a blend of herbaceous pine and spruce combined with notes of rosemary, carnation, cedar, and hints of spice. I like that they use words uh, herbaceous. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> It's just, it's an amazing blend of fragrance oils. A little bit earthy, a little bit sweet. Definitely a hint of spice in there, which I like. It does discolor to a tan, as I saw with the notes from the website. With those notes, we're gonna keep this kind of a natural kind of color. So the colors that we're gonna use today are gonna be Lounge Lizard from Mad Micah's. Very pretty golden green next one will be goldfinger this one doesn't stay shimmery like this one it actually turns into a beautiful rich caramel color i made caramel apple soap a couple years ago and it was a perfect color for it oh it turned out so well and then we're going to use titanium dioxide so the technique I plan on using today is a drop swirl. I'm going to separate the batch into thirds and then I'm going to fragrance two. I'm going to fragrance the caramel color and I'm going to fragrance the white. And even though I know it's going to discolor, I'm going to try to lighten up that discoloration just a tad bit with the titanium dioxide. And then the grain will be unscented. So oils are cooled down, lies cooled down. Got my additives in here and we're ready to rock on. Soap's all blended up, just past emulsification. Still very runny, which is what I like. So next I'm going to split it off and add the colors.
guys back to show you how I smooth out the top of the soaps. I used a cranked palette knife like this. Uh, you can get it from any craft store. Make sure this part's stainless steel because it is touching the soap. And just kind of go in and flatten it out. It's a little tricky in small molds such as this, but I'm sure once I get a bigger mold, or if you guys have a bigger mold, be much easier. Ah. Oh, that's looking so pretty. And my soap frosting recipe, I use olive oil, coconut oil, cocoa butter, and castor oil. And guess what? If you check out the description box below, you'll find the recipe sitting right there. So I'm gonna give this more time to set up and bring it back when it's ready to pipe. Okay, we're back. Soap frosting has set up wonderfully. Look at that. Let me get you in. The, let me get it in the camera so you guys can actually see it. Isn't that just fabulous? All right. So let me get my piping bag. And we can start the frosting. So I gotta tell you guys a story from when I was growing up and how silly and ridiculous my dad is. We were driving back from Michigan. Our family trip every year was to go to Michigan to see my mom's side of the family. And one year we got a Christmas tree up there because it was super cheap and then the next year you know everyone's like oh bring me back a Christmas tree and we're like okay not a problem. So that year we were loaded down with Christmas trees on our little camper and it was the cutest thing and you know my dad installed a CB radio too so we could chit chat with the truckers and at one point we were stuck in between two truckers and my dad's like oh let's see what they're talking about and we turned on the CB radio and we just caught the conversation between the two of them about us and they're like hey so and so do you see that little camp behind you load down christmas trees i wonder where they're going and my dad being my dad says we're going to disney world and i'll never forget i was probably seven years old when he said it like that and it was just the funniest thing and it shocked the both of them both of the truckers because they didn't think we were listening and then for like the next two hours, we were talking to those truckers. And it's memories like that. You're really, you, I miss, I miss going to Michigan with my family all loaded up in a camper. We used to just take a, a minivan when we first started going. The reason that we went to Michigan was for Thanksgiving. And I remember 
all the kids had to be in the barn. And it was cold. Well, for me, it was cold. Because coming from Florida, I didn't have clothes, winter clothes, or appropriate winter clothes to wear. So everyone's in their, you know, thick jackets and goose down jackets and vests and sweaters. Uh, the most I had was jeans and tennis shoes. <laughs> Living in Florida, you really don't need much for winter. Oh my goodness, it's so tall too. Cool. So what we're going to do next is we're going to sprinkle on some Sparkle Me Gold Mica from Mad Micas. I know it kind of shook down the camera kind of quick. I got to move along. But here is it. It is an eco-friendly, it's an eco-friendly base mica glitter. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I had to read the label. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me make sure I got that straight. <laughs> And I don't have a formal way of doing this, so we're just gonna just dust it with the palette knife. I love using palette knives for basically everything. So the next and the final step is to add these little gumballs that I made literally like an hour ago because I completely forgot to bake them, but that's okay. I have them now. I love melt and pour for that. And I'm going to do my bestest to line them up with my cut marks that are not really there anymore. So I'm just going to wing it. I cut my bars kind of big. I like big bars and I cannot lie. Ha 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 ha, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to make sure I can not chop these off. Some of them got a little flat, and it's okay. Did I make enough? I didn't make enough. Oh no, I did make enough. I just didn't grab enough. Okay, hold on guys. Get some more. Got a little soap on that, make sure kind of even. I don't have a multi cutter, multi bar cutter. I have a single cutter, so the height is not a really a problem for me. Let me get one more ball. Uh -huh. Voila! What do you think? So now the hardest part about soap making is the wait. Having to wait 24 to 48 hours for the soap to set up enough to cut it. You guys don't have to wait that long. Isn't that great? So lucky. I will post pictures of the cut at the end of this video and yeah. We are back 36 hours later because I really wanted the soap to set up and I wanted to introduce to you my soap cutter. I know it's huge and silly. 
but it works for me. I designed this soap cutter many years ago after I had purchased this wire cutter from Amazon. Here it is right here. I had one of the cheapo, I think it was like a cheese cutter or it's it sold as a soap cutter. It's really small. It, I bought it and I bought this and it didn't work out for me. So I'm like, hmm, let me make my own soap cutter with it with its own guides to fit this and to fit my soaps. So, so that's what we have here. I drew it out and I had my friend Chris actually make the soap cutter. And in my mind, it was going to be a lot smaller. However, once it was finally made, it's a huge beast of a soap cutting guide. But it works out really well. So the reasoning behind the two sides here, I wanted, you know, them to be tall enough to, I wanted them to be tall enough so if I made tall soaps, frosted soaps or and whatnot, I had enough clearance for the top of the soap. I designed the, the width to fit the wire guide perfectly. So as you can see, it lines up right at the end of each end of the wire cutter. This is what I've been using for years. And it, I don't even, I guess it is technically a single bar cutter. I just, I just made it. <laughs> I like to make my things if I can get away with it. I made a couple of soap molds and this just didn't turn out well. But this, it's been a beast. I don't even have a name for it. What should I name this, y'all? It needs a name. And then I can put the name right here. There you have it. There is my soap cutter. I have been very shy about showing everyone because it looks so silly to me. But it works out really well. I can toss this into the wash. I can toss this into the sink, scrub it down really good. And I really like my soap cutter and it has memories. It's unique, but really it's just a bunch of clean scrap pieces of wood with stainless steel screws because it does get washed. These need to be stainless steel. That's really impor important. Let's get to cutting the soap. So I'm going to show you from this angle first, and then I'm going to bring you around the side and show you the front view. And I know it's kind of hard to see because I have this guide here. But I'm going to scoot this over. And I have, I drew my cutting guide here. I like to cut my bars at an inch and a quarter just because it looks beefy and I like the way it looks. But these didn't line up right in my mold, which is good. It's okay. So I just place and make sure the wire is touching on both sides and I go straight down like that. And let's see what it looks like on the inside of this soup. <gasps> Look how cute. Didn't this just come out so cute? I absolutely love drop swirls. It's probably my favorite technique, honestly. And oh, it smells so good and fresh. Oh, I can't wait for these to cure. I'm gonna have to take one for myself. So I'm gonna scoot this just a little bit. Get the cut lined up between the two embeds on top. Now, occasionally, if the soap is too new, I guess, within the 24 to 36 hour range, if I unmold it then and try to cut it, it does stick to the bottom. So my next version of this will be Marine Board, just on the bottom, because Marine Board gets a little expensive. So this will be the Marine Board, smooth and these will still be wood. And then... Woo! That is so pretty. And look at that soap frosting. I thought there might have been like a lot of holes because there's like 
the ridges on the side are really like detailed, but it, it just came out so great. Let's cut one more from this angle. I think soap cutting is like my Zen moment where I can take my time and enjoy the fruit of my stress labor, I guess. I get a little like, I don't know, every time I soap, I've been soaping since 2003 when I was a tattoo artist. So I've been doing this for a long time and still some, there's days where I'm like, I get kind of tense, I guess, but I, it's coming together. Voila. I think it's so cute. Okay, now let's bring in, I'll show you from the front view. Okay, so here's the front view. Got it lined up where I need it to be. Just like that. Oh. That's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and cut up the rest of this soap, put it on the curing rack for the next four weeks, and yeah, see you guys later.